Hey there everyone, this is Danielle, playing some more Super Mario Odyssey while permanently crouched. Last time we got every B-side moon in New Donk City and we made our way over to Shavaria. Uh, so here we didn't actually finish the story last time either, so we're going to be doing that first. And once we've done that, we're going to be trying to get all the minor moons. I believe they should all be collectible here. Uh, there is a 2D section, but as we've learned, we can do 2D sections, so I think we should be able to get every moon in this kingdom. Uh, we don't need to sit down or start a dancing cutscene or anything. We should be okay. Uh, but for now, we're going to go do the story. So we head back into Shiveria Town, which is, of course, underneath all this ice here. All right, I started the thing. Snow. It's not quite the same thing as ice. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna look at this look at this hint art right away so I don't forget. As you can see, it's kind of easy to find in that spot. It's just we forgot to look at it earlier, so we couldn't actually get the moon. Uh, there's a bunch of snowflake uh, purple coins to get here as well. We do need these because we need the outfit from this kingdom in order to get all of the moons here. Uh, so we will be trying to do that. Um, as you can see, we have three of these four lanterns lit. That's because we've done three of the four areas. Uh, the one we haven't done is this one. And this one has poison ground, so that's fun. It also has these guys. The, um, what are they called again? I don't remember. They're, they're just little lizard friends. Typhoos, they're called typhoos. I don't know why, but that's what they're called. So you can capture a Typhoon and you can blow away spinies with it. Uh, and the part we were having trouble with was right here because this this here Typhoon kept messing me up. Uh, fortunately, we can just make our way around here without too much trouble. And just dodge around to here. You're supposed to use the Typhoon to um, push this block out of the way, but you can just make your way around like I just did. Uh, the moon's hidden here. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah, so that's a good start. Uh, we do want to capture that Typhoon. I believe we're required to, in fact. Uh, because we need to get rid of all the spinings on that platform with the trillion spinings, basically. Uh, you have to be careful because Typhoons will blow Cappy away. Uh, and when Cappy's blown away, we don't have access to her for a bit longer. And therefore can't avoid falling down pits and things for a bit longer. Uh, but once we've got to this Typhoon, we're pretty much home free. All we've got to do, we can just float around and grab some purple coins. We don't have to do that, but I'm just going to do it. There we go. Then all we got to do is just get all the spinies off this platform, which is pretty easy. Uh, just blow them away. I think you could probably... Maybe. You can't... You can knock them around a bit just by hitting them with Cappy. So maybe you could do it without the Typhoon if you were really committed to doing it that way, but... So that's the fourth and final barrier we have to open. Uh, once we've done that, it will give us access to the racetrack and the Bound Bowl Grand Prix. I don't know why they're calling it a Grand Prix when it's just one race. Like, I, I don't know much about like, French or whatever language that is, but. In Mario Kart, a Grand Prix is four races. <laughs> so, it's a bit weird that it's only one here. Um, anyway, we just drop down this hole here, which gives us access to the race course. Uh, yeah, you just keep sliding for a while. Then you finally land here. Uh, Snowland Circuit has a slightly different remix of the Shiveria Town music, which I think is nice. It's basically the same, but it's, it's a little different. Um, so, the guy that does the race is this fellow here with the sunglasses. Uh, you can't start because you are not a uh, Shavarian. You need to be a big round seal friend in order to actually do the race. Uh, and you can't capture any of these seal friends because they're all wearing hats. Or, I mean, that one's not wearing a hat. He's wearing like a hood, I guess. I guess that counts. Uh... But there is one racer in this direction that we can go talk to. There's also some other stuff we can do here. Uh, 
Firstly, we can uh, get up here and just bounce our way over here, and there's a bunch of hidden coins. So that's nice. There we go. I believe over here there's also a moon we can nab. You can clear out the snow here, but there's nothing between these blocks, so there's not much point. Um, There's the racer that we need to talk to, but we can also go through the snow over here to reach some purple coins. 25 out of 50, that's pretty good. I believe that's enough to buy the outfit, so we don't actually need any more, but I'm going to try to get all I can. Okay, so here's the other racer who won't come out of the waiting room. Uh, if we talk to this, this racer here, you can see they're not wearing a hat, and you can see that they're scared to race, but someone else is welcome to take their place. So what we're going to do is take their place and also their corporeal form. <laughs> there we go. And now Mario is one of these. So basically they just roll around like this, uh, but the important thing is that you can bound by tapping the B button as you hit the ground. And you build up a lot of speed by bounding like this. Um, you otherwise would not go nearly as fast, basically. So what you want to do is try to bound with perfect timing throughout the entire race. It's a bit tricky, but it's doable. So yeah, all we got to do now that we have a racer that we've disguised ourselves as by throwing our hat onto their head, we just talk to this fellow here and we can start the race. The first one's pretty easy because, you know, it's a sort of mandatory one. Uh, there are actually four races to do. And they get a bit harder, but you can see the basic idea. I'm just bounding every time I hit the ground and it's making little sparkles and speeding up and launching me forward pretty effectively. Uh, I'm also steering the animal, of course, in order to get around the corners and stuff. This is the racetrack we'll be on. Uh, you can see it's not too tricky to get around. So all good. Uh, you can just press start when you're ready to race. It's actually plus, I suppose, but you know, it's, it's clearly the start button. They just labeled it differently. Uh, and so yeah, this is the Snowline Circuit race. That's the name of this track we're on. Uh, and basically we have to come first to win the multi -moon. Uh If we don't come first, then the other player doesn't win the multi and we just get to play again. So it doesn't make much sense, but you know, it's whatever. As you can see, we're now way ahead of everyone without really trying. Uh, because this first race is very easy. Uh, as I mentioned, there are four, and the last two are very hard, especially the final one. Uh, you get a, a single moon for doing the other one instead of a multi moon. Uh, so, three moons between the other three races, I guess, which adds up nicely because you get a multi moon for the first one. Works out nicely. Uh, anyway, yeah, you can see this is not hard. Uh, and this is the reason I didn't want to do it earlier, but we have to do it to unlock some of the moons that we want to get here, so we're doing it now. So yeah, um, I don't think anyone actually uses the motion controls for this one. It says you can shake to bound, but you just press B. It's easy. Anyway, we won, we won the race by a mile. Uh, as you can see, there comes the second racer. It's like at least five seconds later. Supersonic Snowman. Your prize is a multi -man. And that's the story of the of Shavaria. That's all there is to it. Um uh, this is going to be a kind of a short video if I just do the story, so I'm going to have a little look around and grab a few more moons before we leave, before we stop for this video. Um, the secret path is right there behind us. Uh, you can see the checkpoint being highlighted. Uh, we can technically get up there uh, by jumping off of the Odyssey ver with a very precise jump, but I have no idea how to do it, and it's really hard. It's considered one of the hardest speedrunning struts in the game, so... As you can see, there's a whole bunch of stuff here now. There's moon shards all over the place, there's typhoos. 
Uh, I might actually... Hang on, come here, Typhoo. I'm going to capture this Typhoo here. And take it over here. Typhoos move very slowly, and there's no way to speed them up, so that's a bit annoying. Um, over here, you can see there's this, like, wooden peg sort of thing. Typhoos can move those around by blowing on them, so... We're going to push that over to the other side. And then we're going to jump on it, once we get it over there. There we go. As you can see, there's a painting here, which leads to the Cascade Kingdom. That's where the secret path is. Uh, again, because this kingdom can be chosen in a different order, I think this portal can actually be in, in um, Bubblane instead of in Shiveria. But the order we chose, this is where it ended up. So, we're going to be grabbing this moon. Hit the checkpoint, so we can get back up. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! And we're going to be hopping down as well, because the tourist from uh, the tourist from Tostarina will be down here. Basically where the Odyssey is, because the Odyssey is for some reason over here now. Uh, that was a mistake. Okay, I survived. <laughs> Please land directly on it. Oh, damn. There we go. Um, so yeah, here's the tourist just over here near the Odyssey. What we've got to do is just talk to them, and we'll get another moon. Sankin, but also the Metro Kingdom. <laughs> yeah, the Desert Wanderer is really cute. Look at that dork. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! And now they're hinting, that's the Luncheon Kingdom they're hinting about, as you might think. <laughs> Giant metal pooches. They bite, so you know, watch out for that. Uh, if you look at the moon list here now, Cascade Kingdom is complete. 40 out of 40. Uh, we're just going to walk back up to the island in the sky, so we can go through the painting again, back to Shivaria. Uh, and then I think maybe look around for just a few moons more before we end the video, because it's really short at this point. Loop. Okay, so here we are back in Shivaria. That block's been moved back. No big deal. Uh, you can see a checkpoint down there. We'll be hitting that in a moment. I think this time a challenge is something we should look at soon. I forget which one this is. Oh right, okay. Um, so there's just a bunch of platforms over the over the water that you have to just jump across. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah. Uh, you got to remember this water is freezing and will will deal deal damage if you're in it for more than a second or two. So that's something to watch out for. Uh, there's a Capless Challenge Room here. What am I at? That's at 8 moons? Yeah, I might try doing this Capless Challenge Room and then call out a video. So, we'll just leave, uh, leave Cappy out here. Uh, there'll be two moons to get in here. Uh, and we don't have any Cap to work with, so our movement is greatly restricted. <laughs> we'll be bonking a lot in this room. Uh, all the water here that's moving around is ice-cold water, so it will deal damage if you're not careful. Basically, you want to get into the water as it's moving up, so you can get back out onto that ledge above. Like that. Not too tricky. Then you can get over here. Um, there's a bunch of Goombas here. We can't capture any of them, because Cappy's not here, so... All we've got to do is avoid them. You want to fast swim here to avoid taking damage. There we go. There you can just roll your way through. Uh, here, I think you might be able to just wall jump up there, maybe? Yeah, you can actually. Cool. Uh, okay, then we've got some more of these water elevator thingies. We just get on top of it like that. Pretty easy. Um, I think there's a moon up there. I think. I don't totally remember. Uh, I know there's two moons in this room, but I forget exactly where their locations are. There's clearly a water block up there, so there's something. Uh, oops. But it's really high up and I can't reach it, so... I think I need to get on top of this thing, actually. Hey Goombas. 
So, oh yeah, that's right. So yeah, you can swing on that pole over there and make your way over that way. Not too tricky, once you remember what to do. Yeah! So that's nine moons. Uh, the last one is Gilbert. Now we just have to go over here and go down this part with the water here. Basically, ground pound needs a good idea, so you go down a lot faster. There we go. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! And that's ten moons. So I'm gonna go cash these in, and I'm gonna call that a video, I reckon. Oh, maybe I'll get a few more. Maybe. Nah, I reckon that's good. Let's help the Odyssey and cash that in. If we get anything on the way, I'll get it, but otherwise, nah. Uh, you can see there's a lot of uh, cheap cheeps around here. These are special cheap cheeps that are resistant to the cold water, which is why they're a different colour. Uh, uh, there's a door behind this block, so... Hmm, I think we already did this time a challenge. Oh no, we didn't. Uh, basically, he's got to climb up those two poles. Preferably without rolling down into the water. Yeah, I'm going to do that timer challenge and maybe a few other things. There we go. So yeah, you just got to climb up both. Uh, it shouldn't be too hard if you can get on the poles without freezing to death first. You have plenty of time. Uh, I think you can do it without actually using the fast climb. Frequently. So, whoops. Okay, that would have been fine, but I messed it up at the end there. There we go. <laughs> uh, since you can't just stay put on the pole, it's a little harder to position yourself properly. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Oh my goodness, um... Ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! Love that air dive. <laughs> okay, so that's 11 moons. Um, I might grab the moon shards, just because just they're around. It's not tricky. Uh, these give you a little whirlwind you can use to climb back up, which is handy if you want to, for example, climb back up. Uh, it's another one of those um, nuts you can plant to go to a sub area in this room, in this in this realm. So if we were on 1.0, we could use the wet nut glitch in order to climb up to stuff, but we're not, so we can't. And then shot over here. I think you're supposed to use a fish to get this one, but you don't have to. You can just smash your way down there. Just grab it like that. You won't take any damage. Easy. Okay. So there's one more around here somewhere. If I can remember where, that'd be awesome. Uh, there's the moon rock, by the way. There's actually a door directly behind it. Which is one of the things that's quote unquote inside the moon rock in this kingdom, which is kind of an interesting way of handling things. Uh. So, yeah, when you capture one of these cheap cheeps, you stop being cold in the water because they're cold resistant cheap cheeps for some reason. I guess because they live in this water, and so they have to be. Uh. Last moon shot is around here somewhere, I just can't remember where. Uh, so yeah, the cheap people you can hop around on land like this, but you can't really make it much. You can't go very fast like that. Uh, so it's not a recommended means of travel. Uh, I remember where that last shard is? That'd be awesome. Uh, you can go fishing here. There's a Lakitu there. Uh, so there's a moon you can get by doing that. Uh, there's a bunny there, which we'll be trying to get in a bit. Uh, where the last moon shard is? Is it up here? Doesn't look like it. Hmm. Oh, it's over there. There it is, near the bunny. Can't 
Come here, bunny. There we go. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! So yeah, that's the last moonshot. Pretty much just a thing you can do while you're here. It's not difficult or anything. Uh, for Kitu over here, we want to catch a fish again, which will give us a power moon. It sort of made sense to have a fishing moon here because, you know, ice fishing is a thing people do. Well, this isn't actually ice fishing, it's just like a pond. Uh, as you can see, the shadows are a bit more visible here. Yeah, that's the way. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! That's 13 moons. Uh, once I grab the one from the moon, the moon shards, that should be 14. Uh. What's over here? I don't really remember. <laughs> where it actually spawns. Um, there it is. Yeah! Okay, we're doing fine. We're doing fine. Uh, we probably need to leave the area by taking the Odyssey somewhere else in order to reset, so I might do the hint art just to get that to happen, uh, as I did with the previous kingdom. Uh, you can see, that's clearly in the Lost Kingdom, so we'll have to go back there to do that. Oh. <laughs> that's not too much of a hassle. Ooh, hello, coins. Yeah, um, okay, I'm gonna cash in these 14 moons, go to the Hintard in the Lost Kingdom and come back, just so the area is reloaded for later videos. That is my plan. Oh my god, Mario. There we go. He ascend. So yeah, we go to the Odyssey, we cash in all these moons in order, in order to use it again. Ka-ching! Another 14 moons in our arsenal of moons. 477, we're making good progress. So if we go back to the Lost Kingdom now, we can go to the spot we saw in the Hintart and Ground Pound, and that will give us another Power Moon for this kingdom, because that's how it works. <laughs> uh, and when we get back, it should have reloaded bits of the kingdom that was supposed to reload when the story finished, but didn't, because this game is weird in various ways when you do the story at the wrong time. <laughs> there we go. So, here we are on Forgotten Isle again. Uh, there still aren't any more Forgotten Isle moons to get, but there are some moons from up that belong to other kingdoms we can get. So, pretty exciting. I believe we have to go over here, and Ground Pound here, I think is the spot. Yes! Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Yeah! And that's the art done, so we're just going to head back to Tost not Tost Arena, Shiveria again. And that's going to be the video. And next time we'll be doing a bunch more Minor Moons in Shiveria. Uh, I believe we will unlock the last um, post-game area pretty soon, because we're nearly at 500 moons. I think there's enough in... Uh, in Shiveria for that to happen? Ooh, maybe not, maybe not. We might need some from, um... See, there's a lot more in, um... in Bubbling than there are in Shiveria. So, when we go there, there'll be a lot to do. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, we're just gonna head back to Shiveria for now, and that's gonna be the video. I don't know how that staircase fits in that little hatch there that's clearly smaller than the staircase that comes out of it.
Ba-da-da, da-da-da, da-da, ba-da-da, da-da-da, da-da. Oddly enough, Shiveria doesn't really have music up here. There's like some atmospheric backing sort of stuff, but the actual music plays in the town instead. It's a bit weird. Uh, there also isn't a lot in the Moonwalk in this one, so definitely we're doing the b in one video. We will not need more than one. <laughs> uh. Anyway, uh, so there's a race over there. The race takes place during the blizzard, like a lot of the races. It resets to the old version of the area. So that's going to be a bit tricky. Uh, not too hard, though. Basically, you just want to capture a cheap cheap for most of it, and it's not too hard. <sighs> but um, that's it for now. Uh, thanks for watching, and look forward to the next video with more power moons in this here kingdom to be obtained. Hooray!